All right, it is time to get the party started. Good afternoon. Welcome to Change Your Life One Bite at a Time. One bite at a time. My, I hope that my presentation today, what we're going to talk about today is something like you've never experienced before. Because everything, hello, Randy, everything is really based on, be based on atomic habits. By a show of hands or in the chat section, how many of you read atomic habits before? Have you read atomic habits? There we go. Tina has, there we go. Linda has. So Stacy has, I'm, I'll tell you I'm, before I even share, I did not want to read the book. I'm just telling you right now, several years ago, I'm like, I've read every damn habit book known to man. I have. And I'm like, I'm not going to, well, Eric, I'm told you yesterday. And, and Linda, I told everybody on this screen that's joined. I have made it about 17 page. It's on Canva um, PDF that you'll get the highlights of atomic habits. But once I realized it was on the number one bestseller list for 31 weeks, it sold over 1 million copies now. I think when I wrote it, it says 800,000, that there was some validity, and I've loved it, and I've shared it. And today, when we talk about changing our life, really, and you'll see a slide in a minute that says, eat better, move more, and feel amazing. Those are the three things I want you to take away today is what we're going to try to do. So let me share my screen. Let me hit present. It just takes a moment. So I would like this to truly be an interactive conversation. Again, whether it's through the chat section, which I have open, or whether it's with mute. So even though the picture I chose for today's presentation shows we're eating a hamburger, how many of you think if you're going to eat better that you can never eat a hamburger again? If you think you can't eat a hamburger again, then you should just leave now. Because you should be able to eat a hamburger sometimes. We just can't eat them all the time. The whole idea is that we're going to pick and choose when and where and how we do things, how we do things. Real quick, for those who don't know, I think everybody on here actually knows who I am. So I'm Dane Boyle. I have a graduate degree in exercise science. I'm a certified personal trainer. I've been a coach in some realm for over 30 years. I mean, it just means I've got a few gray hairs. I just shaved my head so you can't see them. Then they reminded me that I'm an international speaker. I'm a podcaster, and at the end of the day, when I share with you, uh, you are allowing me to do exactly what I love to do every single day. My mission is to educate. I'm a teacher at heart. Eric and I actually shared a classroom together for like two years. We co-taught in Gonzales, Texas, so thanks for being here, Eric. Educate, motivate, and empower you to live healthier, happier, and a more prosperous life. That is my goal, and that is my mission every single day. So like I said earlier, you can write this to the top of your paper. You can write, eat better, move more, and feel amazing. I believe, and you may have heard me say, most of you have heard me say, I want everybody to age with awesomeness. I really want you to create the life you love. And I believe by making better food choices, that doesn't mean you can't have a glass of wine. It doesn't mean you can't have a cold beer. It doesn't mean you can have nachos at the ball game, but not all the time, right? What's the reward at the end? I believe movement is ultimately the fountain of youth. We're taught that when you hit 30 years old, that you begin to lose muscle mass. But recently, I saw an MRI of a 40-year-old male triathlete and a 70-year-old male triathlete, and you could not tell the difference in the cross-section of their quadricep, the front of their leg, because they both continued to move. Then they showed a quadricep of a sedentary 70-year-old man, and there was tons of atrophy, so the muscle mass was gone. So we've got to do everything in our power to move every single day. Because just like Linda's in that beautiful office, right? And she's on the phone all the time and she's looking at her listings and the MLS and all those things. But if she doesn't stand up a little bit and she doesn't walk around, sitting is the new smoking is what they're calling it. Speaking of that, I rewatched Top Gun. How many of you have seen Maverick? Have you seen the new movie Maverick? Would you recommend it, Randy? Yeah, dude, there you go. There you go. So everybody, I haven't seen it. But getting ready, we watched Top Gun. And it was made in the late 80s. That's when I went active duty. I don't remember everybody smoking, but apparently everybody smoked because even the instructors in the movie smoked. I just, anyway, that's just some random, that's not even on the presentation, but I guess everybody smoked. I had no idea. I was just never a smoker. I think the Lord knew he was going to make me an asthmatic as I got older and thought that maybe that wasn't a wise thing. So by a show of hands, how many think that if you eat better and you move more, you'll feel better and feel amazing? There we go. It's pretty much a no-brainer. I taught science, so Eric, that's my hypothesis, my friend, that if you move more, you'll feel better. Okay, 
It's going to be a show of hands again. I have three questions for you. Here, hello, Stacy. Three questions. Here's the first question. By a show of hands, do you eat food? Here we go. Look at that. I'm like an attorney. I ask questions I know that I'm going to get the answers to. This is awesome. Do you drink alcohol or know anybody does? Raise your hand. There we go. Because I had to change that because years ago I'd ask if you drank and people say no. I was like, ah, oh, crap, I need, I need a yes. So I figured somebody, everybody's got to know that somebody does. All right, last question. This one, maybe you might not say yes, but I think you will. Do you want to live independently for a lifetime? Stacy, I bet you can tell everybody firsthand that that's important, that that's important. So I figured everybody wants you. So I want you to know everybody's got to eat. Everybody either knows or drinks a little bit of booze. Maybe we drink more than we should. I know I do down in Rockport, Linda. I'm trying to cut that back since I go down every weekend. But then we want to live independently for a lifetime. And I believe by moving more, by making better choices and, and creating habits. I want to read this quote. This ultimately is what gave me validity in the Atomic Habits book. And it says, can you, can one tiny change transform your life? It's unlikely that you would say so. Remember, everything we're going to talk about today is truly wrapped around the Atomic Habits book. And an atom is the smallest entity, right, Eric? The smallest thing. So I didn't understand. I thought like an atomic bomb when I first read it. But we're talking about the tiniest little thing can actually change who you are, what you are, and where you're going to go. But what if you made another and another? At some point, you will have to admit that your life was transformed by one small change. So in the current age with awesomeness community, we, we have, have, we're, I'm not going to get to the wedge of expectation. We're talking about that tomorrow, but every single person in there is challenged to move more, eat better. And, and we talk about hydration. So one tiny habit that we talked about is perhaps eating one more vegetable today than you did yesterday, eating one piece of fruit. How many know oh, for a fact that you eat one fruit and one vegetable every single day, 365 days a year. Oh, Randy, I try to, but I, I'm getting better at it. But I, yeah, <laughs> there we go, there we go. But here, it's really that simple. Drinking a little bit more water every day, just like everybody bottoms up. Let's take our water. Come on, we're gonna finish our bottle of water by the time we're done. Nice, there we go. Yeah, that felt good, that felt good. Yeah. Randy, yours, yours, vodka? I just want to make sure. <laughs> but seriously, we're going to talk about changing one habit and how we can go ahead and do that, how we can do it. Let's see if this is going to work. Oh, why did it go backwards? Okay. So, Eric, that was actually me on the left with my – John Wilson made me do that triathlon, by the way. I was probably about 270 pounds. I sit a little under 220 pounds now and I'm working on getting back under 200 pounds is where I am on that picture on the right. But at the same time, for me, it's not just about weight loss. It's making sure because I am a senior citizen, depending on what log you look at now. Linda, I can't, have you ever been to Granny D's, Linda, up at Canyon Lake? Keen, have you ever been? No? Okay, well, it's a great breakfast place. Yeah, I go. And once you hit 55, you can get the senior menu. I cannot wait to go and get that big ass pancake or share it with Tanya because I'm 55. I've, I've been saying that for like two years. Anyway, so we're going to talk about how to win your brain over right here. I'd like you to unmute. What triggers anybody? What, and it doesn't have to be a negative trigger. Is there something? that triggers you to take action? Have you ever wanted to take action to change something in your life and improve something in your life, anybody? Um, yeah. Okay. So you know, you get you to that point. I think you get to that point where you just like, I had enough, you know, I got to do something about it. Exactly, so right. So the trigger often is a negative trigger that you want to do something that's positive, right? Yeah. A trigger could also be a negative trigger when you've had a long day and the first thing you do is reach for a glass of wine or some unhealthy food. That could also be a trigger for sure. We want to talk about triggers that allow you to take action to move the needle to be to move more, eat better, and feel amazing. What makes you want to take action? So Linda said sometimes it's like there's that old 70 you're mad as hell and you just don't want to take it anymore. 
the health, wellness, and fitness culture is really designed for you to fail. Does, does any, do people agree or dis, do you agree with me that they are, it's really designed, there you go. Randy was a certified personal trainer too. Eric's a coach too. It's designed for you to fail, for you to be dependent on them forever, forever. That even I believe true, my dad was a physician, but was he really a healthcare provider or was he a sick care provider? Right. He didn't really have men and women that came into his office that were super healthy and said, hey, now, doc, I want to go run a mile or do a triathlon. He came to people who had been injured, who were sick. And his answer most of the time is to write a prescription. The tattoo in my upper right arm is actually caduceus. I can't really see it. And it discus the ancient um, Olympic symbol because it says exercise is medicine. And that's what we're going to talk about. Up to 90 percent of preventable disease can be cured with proper diet and exercise. Think about that. Move more, eat better, feel amazing. Here's where we're gonna get into some nuts and bolts and some of the minutiae in just a little bit. What's the process look like for taking action? How many of you have ever started a diet, an exercise plan, a course, started it, but didn't finish it or feel like you were successful at the end of it? Yeah, me for sure, right? Because in the book, he talks about when we set goals, that's the, that once we get there, we're not sure what to do next. But if we build habitual habits, it's a process. When we begin to eat better, move more, we're not doing it just eat better, move more, we're doing it to be healthier. We're not running a race to run the race, we're running to run, to become a runner. We're reading the book, not to finish the book, but to become a reader. So when I did my first triathlon, which was that, that picture I showed earlier, first of all, I showed up, I was way under trained. My first goal was don't drown. I didn't. My second one was to finish. And then I had a goal time and I did. And I really was never more scared of any event I've ever done that first triathlon. And I told coach Wilson, I said, John, I don't think I was, didn't think I was going to show up today. And he said, coach, I didn't think you were going to show up either, but I did it, but I did it. But the idea is that I can call myself a triathlete. I can call I can talk. I never really do but I, I should identify with that because I did all of the training. So because there was a process to running, to cycling, to swimming, to lifting weights and all the things. So we're gonna talk about creating the processes today. How do you feel after you achieve success? Do you feel good? If you feel good after you achieve something that's good, give me a thumbs up. You feel better? Of course you do. Of course you do. That's ultimately why we reward people for things. That's why when you do a long distance race, you get a medal. That's why when you join the Trailblazers, you know, you get a t-shirt or, or CG, you get a t-shirt because you get a reward. It's an extrinsic reward. And later we'll talk about intrinsic reward, how it makes you feel, how it makes you feel. All right. Once again, take a drink of water. Does anybody have any questions on, like, we have to identify the process. We have to drive the structure. We have to identify how we feel. All right, well, here's why I hope we get a little bit more interactive and talk a little bit. So James Clear, who's the author of Atomic Habits, also talks about laws of behavior change. So the first law is to make it obvious. So we're going to talk about nutrition today because that's our primary focus. But we're I, prim actually fit uh, nutrition and fitness movement. So... My beautiful, lovely wife has actually proofread my um, ebook, so I, it should be good to go now. Thank you, Stacey, for also finding a grammar error yesterday. But because of the book, last night, I, I, Tanya came, I came home, and I said, man, I ate those strawberries yesterday, and they were fantastic. And she said, I said, why do we always let them go bad? And she said, you know what? What I did was I, I, I washed them, I cut them, I put them in the container, and she put them on the top shelf of the refrigerator. So when I'm home and I open the fridge to go to lunch, instead of, instead of opening it, grabbing ham or turkey to make a sandwich or whatever, and then walk into the pantry and getting leftover. We only ever have chips at the coast, by the way. I don't know why we do that. But we don't eat a whole bag of chips. So I love freaking jalapeno kettle chips. That's like my big time guilty pleasure jam. Um, but then even today, I ate early because I knew that I was going to present here and then I have a one-on-one -on -one right after. And she made it obvious. There are celery sticks. There's um, carrots. There were some leftover vegetables from last night. 
all the stuff to eat. You know, there is zero alcohol in my everyday fridge because if I look, I'm probably not going to drink a beer on a game day, so to speak, at noon. But it would make it at the end of the night where maybe I wa would want to have the, have the beer. Let's talk about going to the gym or working out. If you prepare your gym bag the night before and it's in your car, that's one less barrier to get to the gym. If you work in an environment where you have to dress up and maybe you're in heels, Eric and I don't think I've ever worn heels to work, but what if you brought a pair of sneakers and you had them under your desk and then at lunch, you went on a 10 minute walk? Make it obvious, see it. Put that note on your refrigerator that says, I want to do, I want to achieve this. I will do this at this time in this location. Has anybody, Randy, you have any hacks to making food obvious or fitness obvious? Do you have any hacks that you've done or things that you've done? Um, well, I put my wedges that we talked about on my yep. refrigerator in chalk. So that's super helpful. Um, and then one thing I do is I have like a meal plan that's um, 90%, well, the meal plan is whole foods based. Um, like the diet whole foods. Um, but there are some in there that we don't eat. So every week I use that it's a 30 day meal plan of breakfast, lunch, and dinners. Um, that's really helped me because I just kind of repeat some of the same stuff. Um, we get new stuff by swapping out some of the ones that we don't like. That's really helped me. We, I've been using it for like a year and a half now. So it's easier. Right. So in the book, he all, thank you, Randy. He also talks about decision fatigue. So think about it. Mm -hmm. if work, if, right. At the end of the day, you've made everything from getting dressed to what you're going to eat. If you still have kids at home, from turning left to turning right, to stopping at the stoplight, to making a decision, to making an offer, Linda, to having a counter offer, to calling the title company. I mean, there's a million different things, right? Stacy's got a whole staff. And amazing enough, sometimes people call in sick. I mean, Tina has to launder money. I'm just kidding. Tina works with money all the time. So she's got to make a bunch of decisions on deposits and withdrawals and things like that. Eric's a school teacher. Amazing enough, some of the kids are good, some are marmot, sometimes there's faculty meetings. So the less we have to make those decisions when we're tired and fatigued, the better decisions we can make. Does anybody else have anything that they make obvious so that they make better choices? That's, you don't have to, but that's fine. But we're gonna talk about that. So if you want to have a, go ahead, Stacy. do you have something to say? Oh, just talking about the prep in your gym bag or yeah. whatnot. Uh, every night when I go to bed, I set out my workout clothes for the next morning. Cause if I don't have to decide at five o'clock AM what I'm wearing, then that's great. Especially at five o'clock in the morning when you're barely brushing your teeth and wiping the crusties out of your eye. Exactly. In, in, in the book, he also talks about a group of men that kind of have their own uniform, same khaki pants, same white shirt, same tie, same shoes. That's all that's in their closet. So when I was active duty, I didn't have to think about my uniform. It's the same duty day uniform every single day makes life a lot easier. So when it comes to moving more, make it obvious, put it out there. Something like, I will do this at this time. So for example, make it obvious, right? It can't be vague. I will exercise at eight o'clock AM at this gym or at Camp Glenner. I will go for a walk. I will lay out my clothes. This Tanya likes me to lay out my clothes because she said she's tired of hearing me move the hangers in the closet all the time. So that's how I ultimately had to lay out my workout clothes or my gym clothes in the morning. And so make it obvious. Make it attractive. Make it something that you want to do. If it's tedious, if you hate it, you won't do it. Tina, can you tell, tell us about Jesse's third day and third month? What, what he says about that? <laughs> I put you on, I, I remember what it is. Can you share it? Were you on mute and share it? Oh, yes. He said, if you have a, okay, hold on. Most people will start a habit and they'll either quit, quit on the third day, the third week, or the third month. Like I, that's, I, I, it's so true. It's, go ahead. Third day, and then if you can get past the third week and you can get past the third month, then you've made it happen. Absolutely. I, I would agree with what I've seen in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But we want to create habit. And then also in the book, he talks about the fact that we shouldn't have a new habit that takes really the initial part more than two minutes. Get your shorts, get your socks, get your shirt, 
get your sports bra, whatever it is, and get it out and put it out there and be ready to rock and roll and go. Like two minutes, boom, 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 get it done. Make it easy, make it easy, make it easy. As a matter of fact, not only can you make it attractive, what is your reward? So for example, so Randy, I'm going to use your, um, what do you like to watch? What are the shows you like to watch, Randy? Your oh, pleasure? cool. You're going to call me out on my ta- trashy TV. <laughs> <laughs> So she likes some trashy TV, like Housewives of Atlanta or something like that. Yes, right? all right? the Housewives. I also really like Survivor too. Okay. It's so funny. I, I talked to my daughter about that because that bit, so, so has been on so long. I used to watch it with my kids when they're at home and my daughter's in her 30s now. So that show's been on mm-hmm. for a long time. But here's the idea. So if Randy wants to change or create, well, not change, wants to create, it's easier, by the way, cognitively to create a habit than break a habit. So we're going to create new habits. So if she goes and works out at night after Oliver goes to bed, that's her son, and she works out for for 60 minutes, then she can reward herself by 30 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour of trashy TV, right? Maybe it's a bubble bath. Maybe it's quiet time during the day. So it's attractive, like, hey, I want to get this done. So I'll, I'll use one of mine. So I've already said I like to drink beer and one of mine. So Linda and Eric, you'll learn about the wedges of wedge of expectation tomorrow. But the idea is that you have a maximum minimum of every day that you're going to do. So in January, Tanya and I went and parked our RV in San Antonio. By the way, there's a KOA like right downtown, by the way, if anybody wants to go there that has one. And I really wanted a cold beer. Like it was hot. It was already 90 degrees. It was January. And that's my mindset. I'm changing that. But I had not met my floor of my water. So I literally went in the cooler and I took out 64 ounces of water and I drank it all. And my reward, and we don't really want your reward to be food, by the way, but I'm just letting you know that you set the expectation. The only one you disappoint is yourself if you don't do it. That's it. That's why we set up a wedge of expectation. Imagine an inverted food pyramid. You've got the top and you've got the bottom. The little bitty piece, and I'll go into this more tomorrow, is the minimum, what we call the floor. Move your body 20 minutes a day. The maximum is 60 minutes, maybe. And then for um, water, it might be 20 ounces of water minimum and 64 ounces of max. So that's what we talk about, a minimum max. So reward yourself with something that's not food-based. So when I do X, I earn Y. I earn Y. Make it so easy, you can't fail. And that's what we're going to lead in tomorrow. Make it so easy. Packing your gym bag, pre-cutting your fruit. One of my hacks is, buying one of those big trays like Costco or even an HEB. I know you don't have HEB in in Kansas, Stacey. So whatever your grocery store is, and there's still big chunks of pineapple and things. I come home and I just cut them all up and put them in my smaller container. Then they're just stacked up in the fridge. And when I I make Tanya's lunch, I just grab the fruit. We pre-cut the vegetables already. We, and we go, it's like everybody else. We go through phases where we're very consistent and then life punches you in the throat. And we don't, but we want to create a habit. In the book, he also uses the idea of if your room is a mess, your bed, your master bathroom, bedroom is a mess. And you go, you know what? We're going to clean our room today. And it takes you three hours and you dust everything and you vacuum or, or you mop the floor, whatever it is. You do the sheets and do all the things. And you're like, man, it looks good. But if you don't change your habits to put your clothes not on the floor, this is talking to me, instead of the basket, or you don't dust your nightstand or your entertainment center or make your bed every day or whatever it is, guess what you're going to do? You're going to have to clean your room again because you haven't created a habit. You haven't made it a ritual to undress and put your clothes away. You haven't made it a ritual to make your bed every day. So make it eat, make it so easy. Fruit in the fridge, gym bag, water bottle ready. What is it? Already know what you, you'll pack your lunch. So because we've been talking about this, the more I talk about it with you guys, with y'all, that's Texas for everybody, I tend, I do it more. So Tanya and I had our lunch. My, she actually packed my breakfast this morning. So I ate my breakfast. Between, I teach at camp at 545 and I teach one at eight. It gives me about an hour and I ate my yogurt and my fruit in the truck, listen to a podcast and sending you all text messages. So make it so easy you can't fail. Make it satisfying. So in the bigger picture, reward yourself with something more satisfying. Maybe that you're successful with your movement and your water and your food for the whole week. 
and you decide you're going to draw yourself a bath with candles and you're going to just ask everybody to leave you the heck alone for a few minutes. Maybe you reward yourself by going to see Maverick again. You know, if you, if you want a visual representation of it, I always say get an old school calendar, get a Sharpie pen or stars, and just every day you're successful, put one on there and think about how many days you'll see you're successful every day, every week, every month. And you'll just start to feel really good about what you're doing. Today I got up, I, I, I packed my lunch. I ate my lunch. So here's the deal. If you already have your lunch in the fridge at work, and your coworkers say, hey, I'm going to pick up lunch, you can just say politely, say, no, thanks, I brought my lunch. That doesn't mean you can't eat in the break room with them, but you don't have to have the Big Mac fries and a milkshake. By the way, I think you should be a carb snob. You're good. We all should eat carbs, by the way. I have a whole diet where I can show you where like 60% of your day is carbohydrates, and you'll still feel really good and feel great and be more full than you ever were. But if you're in Paris and you walk by the bakery and they take out a croissant, eat it. But when you take that little wrapper, that little thing, and you peel it off and you whack the croissants on the countertop and then you put them on the cookie sheet and you bake them, they're pretty good, but it isn't going to be as good as the croissant in Paris. If you go to the store or you go to church and they've got food afterwards and they open the plastic container and they've got the cookies, they're going to taste pretty good. But if Miss Mabel has her pecan pralines and she's 87 years old and it's been in her recipe for a family for 100 years, eat that cookie. Eat that homemade cookie. So I'm going to review real quick. Because we're going to have homework before it's over today. We're going to have some open conversation. Make whatever change you want to obvious. If we're going to talk food today, make it obvious. I'm going to challenge you to make one thing obvious tonight for tomorrow or for this evening. Make it obvious. Put the best food, you know, at the grocery store, the, the food that they have at eye level is the one that makes the most profit. It's that simple. It's not about health. It's about profit. Make it obvious. Make it attractive. Make it to, if I do A, I will earn B, just like your own medal. A watch TV, take a bubble bath, what would it be? And I'm going to ask you in a little bit what can make it more attractive. Make it so easy you can't fail. I think what happens is we have that idea, that mentality on January 1st, I'm never going to eat a carb again. I'm never going to have a glass of wine again. I'm never going to have ice cream again. I'm going to run five miles a day. I'm going to lift weights every day. I'm going to read 100 pages a day or whatever, even way less than that. And we fail. Does anybody have any idea when the average New Year's resolution um, is finished, done? Anybody? Unmute and tell me. Take a guess. When is the New Year's resolution completely kaput? Go ahead, Stace. January 12th. Very good guess. Anybody else? Tina said three days, three weeks, or three months. It's actually January 17th. Just they've done the research. But either way, it's not very long because they haven't created new habits. And usually they eliminate things. I haven't asked you to eliminate anything. I've asked you to think about what you can do, how to make it easy, how to make it attractive, and how to make it rewarding. So that you ultimately look forward to it. When you do a one-on-one -on -one with me, I don't want you to go, oh, shit, I got, sorry, I was going to try not to swear, whatever. <laughs> oh, crap. I have to do a one-on-one -on -one with Dane or like, oh, I'm looking forward to it. And I feel better afterwards. I feel motivated afterwards. I feel empowered afterwards. I want you to take your sneakers because you wore heels to work. Or Linda, literally, what if you had shoes and you walked around up and down those stairs on those two-story houses till the buyer gets there? Just an idea. You got to check it out to make sure everything's put away anyway, right? You could walk and you could say, I'm going to walk the stairs three to five times every time. Not so much that probably you get sweaty, you know, in your, mass, your, your uh, makeup runs, but I'm just saying, make it easy. You're already going to be there anyway. Make it satisfying. How are you going to reward yourself? And what is your bigger extrinsic or intrinsic reward? What you do is who you are. If you move your body on a regular basis, you're an exerciser and you are going to be healthier. Even a heavier person who exercises more is going to be healthier. It's going to be healthier. All right. Unmute. Tell me something that you could do as a reward. What could you do as a reward for making a better choice or being consistent in creating new habits? Stace, are you unmuted still? Yeah. Okay. What can you do or what, what would you like to do? 
a spa day or a mani pedi. I've used that as a reward for myself before. A massage. Good. Yeah, that's always good. How about you, Linda? Have you ever done that before? Um, yeah, facials. There you go. How about you, Wink? Golf or cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, and what we're going to talk about that is that I don't have any problem with either of those, but we just ultimately will limit them, right? That's for you. What about you, Tina Marie? By the way, her middle name's not really Marie. I just made it up. You know me, I'm still thinking. <laughs> That's true. And you were and you were the first person on Zoom again. Um I don't really I don't I have no clue what I would do, honestly. Okay, well I'm gonna challenge you to think about that, whether it's a, I'm sorry. I might buy myself something. Nothing wrong with that. Buy your buy yourself something. Maybe, you know, for a lot of the moms, sometimes it's like just could you can I go to the bathroom by myself? <laughs> just right can i just go to the bathroom by myself you know and but we really are what our habits do no matter if we lie to, i don't want you to lie to yourself what are you doing what choice are you making to create the person that you want to be and at the end of the day my guess is how many by show of hands want to be a health, happier healthier more prosperous person here we go here we go so that's really what we're working towards don't make resolutions. We're going to build habits. We're going to create new habits that ultimately allow us to become who we are. Thinking long-term for many people is very, very hard. But if you make it easy, if you reward yourself and you take it one day at a time, one day really becomes a week, a week becomes a month, a month can turn into a year. And then for those of us that have been on for a little while, a year will turn into a decade pretty quickly, pretty quickly. No matter what we do, we have to take action because the sum of zero, my friends, it's zero. If you do nothing and expect something, you're going to get nothing. Is that correct, right? If you do nothing, you get nothing. You get nothing. How do you get inspired? How do you get motivated? Anybody, somebody share. How do you get inspired to, to build these habits? What will you do? Or what's allowing you to, like, to be here today, to motivate you? And here's the deal. I really want you to be empowered and motivated. Because if I inspire you tonight, you're going to do your homework for tomorrow. But if I empower you and motivate you, then you'll keep doing action afterwards. Anybody? Wink, do you have something to do that inspires you to keep you moving? Help my son lose weight. There you go. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. What about you, Stace? I think just seeing my progress helps me a lot. Like in the beginning, it was progressing from walking around the block to walking a mile to walking three miles and then five and then starting to run and then repeating those distances and then just building on my success in the, in the past and working toward a new goal. Um, now it's more of the using heavier weights when I'm working out. Right. That's kind of what I'm focused on now. Well, that's huge. We're going to talk about stages of change. And I thought about doing that first, but Stacy, when it comes to fitness is what we call the maintenance stage. So she's been super active, super consistent, closer exercise ring. How many times now? Over 500. Over 500 days. That's legit. But she started one time. So now she's what you call the maintenance phase and having to find other ways to motivate, whether it's more weights and things like that. So, but we don't, comparison is a thief of joy. Correct. So we're right. We're never going to, we don't compare ourselves to anybody. We just want to support everybody. Linda, how have you found motivation in your life? Progress. Seeing yeah. the progress. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting. It's seeing the progress is huge, but what I find interesting and I'm just as guilty as the next guy is that we, because it was goal oriented, once we hit that goal, especially with food, well, then in Texas, it's like, well, hell, I met my weight goal. I want three cheese enchiladas. I want chips and salsa. I want two margaritas and I want flan. By the way, I'm sure I've done that. And my in-laws just thought Tanya and I were super cheap because every now and then I still want cheese enchiladas being a San Antonio kid, but we just split our food when we go out to eat. And I call it half the calories, twice the fun. My in-laws just thought I was a cheap ass and didn't want to pay for dinner, but... How about you, Randy? How do you find your motivation? 
so mine is a lot of like men, my mental health and stability. So like having a clear, like being able to think more clearly and being able to like tolerate my two-year-old. No, but mental health, it's huge. I was talking to a, a camper, a camp a camper yesterday. And Liz said that she tells her husband, I got a super stressful job. She works in mental health. She's got a, a five-year-old and a 15-year-old. She goes, if I don't go work out just to blow off some stink, I'm going to come home and just not be a very happy human being and raising my voice all the time. And that's not good for anybody. Yeah, that's me. So, and so that it all, all of that specifically works for sure. Part of my inspiration personally now is watching men and women, my family members, diminish at the age that I am today. It's just added more motivation. I truly believe that for the first 40 years of your life, unless you get cancer, God forbid, it's pretty much sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You can do about anything you want to do your body, and it's resilient. But then I want, for those of us between 40 and 60, or you know people of 40 and 60, watch how quickly they diminish. What is their quality of life? How many medications are on there on? People get knee surgery, hip surgery, and not just because they were in a terrible car accident, but some of it's just being sedentary and overweight and those kind of things. And I just don't want to do that. We lost my dad seven or eight years ago now. Um, and really all complications being morbidly obese. And I used to kiss his chubby little face and say, you could be a pain. This has got it. This is a quote. You be a pain in my ass for a long time if you could take care of yourself. But he didn't know emotionally how to do it. But my granddad we buried last year was 97. And my whole family, my three children, the kid's mom all went to my great grand or great grandfather's great great grandfather's 100th birthday. So genetically, my dad could do it. But carrying 50 to 100 pounds, depending on his life for 40 years, just took a toll on his body. It just did. So I don't want that to happen to any of you. So find your inspiration wherever you do. All right. Here's where the rubber meets the road, my friends. Action steps. Tomorrow, we're going to meet right back here tomorrow at noon. I am going to change up our schedule a little bit, and I'll talk about that in a second because I'm talking to people I think will be, have more attendance. But anyway, we talked about making it easy, right? Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. What are one to three things you can do tonight or tomorrow by the time we get on the call tomorrow to either move more and eat better or a combination of both. What are things that you want to do? Again, face it's heavier weights. Maybe it's changing up your routine to don't, don't not come to see me, but learn do, doing something different at the end of the day. But to make it, but you got it again. And I'm going to send this to everybody in the email today's um, video. You can listen to it. But the key is action steps. What are one to three things you can do for your diet? And I don't mean like diet. If you want to lose weight, we'll talk about that later. That's fine. Right now, if you just change your dietary habits and just move, all you have to do is move your body 60 minutes a freaking week to reduce your comorbidities, which are multiple diseases, two or more diseases in your life. Reduce hypertension, reduce diabetes, those type of things. 60 freaking minutes. That's 12 minutes a day over five days. So that's 10, less than 10 minutes a day in a week. I get all excited because I'm it's so simple and we make it hard. But make it obvious. What can you do? Did you put out your food in the fridge? Did you pack your lunch? Did you put your gym clothes there? What are you going to do? And what, what, you have to decide what you want to achieve. And then here's the real key. I need one to three things. And then I want to know how you're going to make it obvious. How are you going to make it attractive? Meaning what is your reward, right? So from trashy TV, Randy, earn it, girl. Earn it. How are you going to reduce a barrier? That, that, I usually call it reducing a barrier, but make it easy. Make it so easy you can't fail. And then what is your big reward? Is it the massage? Is it the facial? Is it the quiet time? What is it? The teacher in me wants you to make sure you take action. It's huge. I have, how many of you, by a show of thumbs up or thumbs down, like to waste time? Thumbs down is you don't like to waste time. There you go. I hate wasting time. Kind of like all the damn testing we did, Eric, as school teachers, then we didn't ever do anything with it. That's 16 years ago. I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> yeah, you go. Now I got a thumbs up for that, for sure. 
So we're not going to waste time. Your, your action steps today, your coach's challenge today is one to three things you would like to improve, actually build habits on. And then I need to know, how are you going to make it obvious? How are you going to make it attractive? How are you going to make it easy? And what's your reward system? I say see you tomorrow, but I'm going to actually stop share. Anybody have a question, comment, concern, thought? Somebody wants to say, this was so amazing. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. What is this? <laughs> there you go. Jazz hands. What time tomorrow? Noon. So here's how we're going to change it up. I was going to do five days in a row, including Friday and Saturday, but just people have ball games, people have all the things. So that's what I was do. talking about. Because if we, if we win tomorrow tonight, they play at noon tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. I'll send you the record. I want you to win, by the way. I hope you're not here. <laughs> I hope you're not here. But everybody who's on the email list is going to get an email anyway. So we're going to be here today and tomorrow. And then next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all at noon. So all like a lunch and learn. But in between, every day, by the way, and I should have said this in this morning's email, is about 9 o'clock, you'll get an email for the next seven days, six days. Does that make sense? So always be something with a little bit more information, a little bit more learning. Um, maybe I think I put in a couple of videos in there too. So again, I'm going to try to make it obvious, attractive, easy with a reward. Same thing. I'm building a habit of myself to be able to create the emails that make it easy for everybody. If you have somebody that you know that you'd like to join us, they can jump in in the middle. I can resend them the information. But at the end of the day, we're going to eventually, as we go on, talk about actual quote unquote food and choices. But for now, it's really just about what do you want? Why do you want it? And then how can you make it obvious, attractive, easy, and, and then again, make it satisfying? Super simple. You have a question, Randy? No? Anybody? Tina? Tina, are you going to have a question tomorrow? <laughs> hey, I'm going to hit stop record, and then if you have a question you want recorded, let's do that.